the beginning of 2024, I decided that this was going to be the year that I became the most disciplined and the most creative version of myself. And it had always been a goal of mine to read The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. The book is broken down into a 12 week program aimed to help you recover your artistry and guide you towards higher creativity. I had no idea, no expectations when I went into this book. So to my surprise, Week four was something called a reading deprivation week. For context, this book was written in the 90s. So back then, I'm sure a lot more people read books than we typically do now. I've always been super curious about the idea of a dopamine detox. I've seen so many videos about it. I've also always had sort of an on and off relationship with social media. I even like tried to quit it permanently before. This week's challenge encouraged me to take it a step further and really push myself to finally go after doing a full dopamine detox. The literal definition of a dopamine detox involves abstaining from nearly anything that could be considered pleasurable from food to media to even socializing. And I've seen people do dopamine detoxes for all types of reasons, whether that be to have more sense of motivation and discipline or to become more focused. We live in a world that is moving at a super, super fast pace. And I don't think that we humans have biologically evolved to keep up with that pace. Our nervous systems are constantly shot. We are living off of very high stress levels. And because it's become so normalized in our society, we don't know how to rest. We don't know how to have full focus and attention on one thing without our mind wandering off. And we are living our lives in a completely non present and intentional state. I feel like I've always struggled with not really feeling a sense of authenticity because I've been consuming so much and I felt like my ideas and viewpoints and opinions easily get swayed. I'm saying that I'm easily persuaded, which is not an easy feat to admit. When it's time for me to sit down and work on my creative ideas, I usually just choke because I'm like, I have no ideas. So I wanted to challenge myself during this week to begin building a foundation of a relationship with myself. So my plan for this challenge is to eliminate movies, TV shows, and reading. And then I also want to not go on social media at all. And that includes YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I am going to allow myself to listen to music just because I can't be at the gym with no music. So let's see how day one went. Today I've been trying not to check social media um, and it's been really rough, honestly, because I feel like I'm just not used to being with myself for this long. I never really experienced true solitude. I don't know, it's just a little scary because I'm sitting with my thoughts when I'm consuming like my brain is silent and I'm like, what are, what are my ideas? And I've stopped consuming today and now I'm just like, my thoughts are reeling, but it's almost like I can't control them. I can't really sort out through the muck. I'm just going with the process and hoping that as this challenge goes on, I'll be able to sort through my thoughts. I'll be able to get what I want out of this experiment, which is to be able to create more and to really understand my own inner voice. And it honestly feels really weird trying to figure out what to do with my time because like, I don't necessarily feel like I have anything to work on per se right now creatively. I spent the rest of day one at home with honestly a lot of anxious thoughts. I felt like I didn't know how to rest. I felt overly perfectionistic. I just didn't know how to exist without my phone. I'm so used to getting inspired from other people's content or other people's work that I didn't know how to do that on my own. I realized that I spend all of my free time on my phone. So doing hobbies like reading a book or painting or just allowing myself to create stuff for fun just felt really hard for me. It almost served as a wake up call because I don't think living like this is healthy. I don't think it's sustainable. And no wonder I felt like I wasn't in tune with my inner voice because I drowned myself out through my consumption. I genuinely don't know what's wrong with me. I went to the gym this morning and it was a cardio and core day. And normally on those days, I'm just like on the treadmills. So I'll either listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video. And today I was like, 
well, shit, like, what do I do? Do I just stare at these TVs with the news? So part of this regimen is that I can listen to music. So I was like, hmm, why don't I listen to a full album? So I don't have to really worry about the music and I can just intentionally consume. I looked up the 50 greatest albums of all time and screenshotted the list. And so today I listened to Jay-Z, The Blueprint. Usually I feel like listening to music is a passive activity where you just put it on in the background and you might like sing along to songs you really like, but it's not like you're listening. And because I didn't really even like the album that much, I forced myself to continue listening because I was like, well, if I'm gonna consume something, I have to consume things I also don't like because that will make me a better artist and give me more of a perspective. I tried to wean myself off of consuming so much yesterday. And if I'm being honest, I felt so, so much rage. I journaled eight pages, which never happens for me. That it's like, I don't know, I feel like I'm just existing and not creating enough. And I can't like find the ideas because I usually get a lot of creative ideas from outside inspiration. And so this detox is asking me to find and source the inspiration within and really just develop my own creative voice. It's hard because I feel like I've never been put in that position to really like figure out what I wanna make and what speaks to me and how I'm going to do it without any help any external validation any outside inspiration it's it's difficult and it makes me mad that I'm not already perfect that's what came up for me yesterday I felt a lot of rage so we shall see how the day progresses I decided I'm going to make this a little bit easier on myself by going to a cafe to work on stuff during the day I'm gonna do some creative activities to just get my creative mind going So I just got home and I am eating my last night's dinner. I had a really productive work session and I actually got into flow state and I wasn't expecting it. While I was there though, I kept feeling like this urge to pick up my phone and go on Instagram. I also kept finding myself trying to justify why I should be able to watch a movie or why I should be able to click on a YouTube video. I don't know. I think being out in public around people definitely helped. So we ended the night playing Uno and having breakfast for dinner. And this day was a lot, lot better, mainly because I pushed myself to get out of the house and being around people showed me that part of the reason we feel so lonely is because we're on our phone all the time. We don't look up. By day three, I felt pretty comfortable with my dopamine detox, like I was getting used to it. I had a little routine going where I'd go to the gym and have a good breakfast. And on day three, I decided that I was going to go to a museum and work on a creative project I had developed the previous day. Normally, I struggle with acting on the things I wanna do, but because I didn't have distractions, it was easier to push myself.
Today I went to a cafe and I looked around, I chose a person and I wrote a full 2000 word character study on them in less than an hour. I feel a lot lighter, honestly, and I feel like I've made huge progress on deciphering what is my inner voice versus what am I being influenced on by the outer world, by the media. It feels really exciting and fresh and invigorating and I'm excited to act on these ideas. Even though I'm ending my detox today, it feels like I've made so much progress. I feel like I really learned the importance of intentional media consumption and being conscious of where you are putting your energy at and who you're giving your energy to. And I feel really inspired now to go through my social media media, go through my YouTube and get rid of people that I don't resonate with. And I definitely want to implement more days where I am just not on my phone, where I am not consuming anything. I feel like this has to be like a one day weekly thing. On day one of the detox, I felt so incredibly angry. And I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to not have any plans for the day and just to be literally at home. But I did that and it was not a good idea. I was going through a combination of being extremely bored, but also feeling like I was comparing myself to other people and like I didn't have any original and unique ideas. I spiraled and I was super anxious. I just felt really down about myself because I thought that day one of this challenge, I would be motivated. I thought I would be the most creative I've ever been. And that pressure to be the perfect creative, to be the perfect individual did not do it for me. It made me feel like shit, honestly. I was journaling that I felt like I was having withdrawals because I would do something small and then like get this urge to just go on Instagram and a few times during the day I would open the app and then like catch myself and I have to quickly shut it. The very first thing that I learned is anger is redirection. I was extremely upset because of the way that I was approaching my creativity and I was also really upset because I had nothing to do. Instead of just repeating what I did on the first day I decided look Day two, I need to get out of the house. I need to do things differently so that I can yield better results. Let's say I'm hanging around somebody and I leave that interaction and I just feel angry and not good. That anger is showing me something. It's showing me that I need to create a boundary or it's showing me that I need to change my path. Another thing I learned is that sometimes you just have to go through those emotions and you have to accept it. I was doing something that was good for me and at first you're gonna feel really uncomfortable, but you have to be okay with the discomfort because when you do feel uncomfortable, you are growing, you are making progress. And so even though I didn't feel like that on day one, and I was like fully prepared to start over it from day one again on day two, I didn't do that. And I allowed myself to realize that that anger was so necessary and to moving into a better space but also in learning a lot about who I am. What I expected from this challenge was to learn the positive things about who I am, but learning the insecurities that I have, learning the things that are gonna hold me back, make me a better person. On day two, I found myself more open to the possibility of trying new hobbies and working on my creative pursuits. Throughout this detox, I really got more into writing and I'm so impressed with myself because I would struggle to write more than one page every day in my journal and then Throughout this detox, even though it was only four days long, I wrote 40 pages in my journal, which is wild to me. I was like, okay, like you do have thoughts. You are a person with opinion. It was just really surprising to me how open I was to trying new things because I wasn't reaching for my phone first thing. During this time, I also leaned into my creative projects a lot more and what stood out to me is that I actually acted on them. I ended up creating a video diary and experimenting with my camera skills. It felt really good to not allow my overthinking or comparison to somebody else's video or somebody else's project process to stop me from actually going out into the real world and experimenting. I started leaning more into connecting with people in my life. I felt this urge to just be social and that's crazy for me because I am a hella introvert. Not having my phone or reading or TV to be my clutch, I felt more inclined to reach out to new people and to hang out with the people that I love. In just hanging out with my best friend and my partner, I realized how much more intentional and present I was being with them. It was so nice 
nice to actually be with each other instead of just turning on a movie or talking about our favorite content creators. It was nice to do something different like play a game or go to a museum and, and walk. I just, I just felt a lot sh more stress free. I felt like there was less pressure on me to be perfect, a lot less pressure to perform. There were moments where, I don't know, I just felt more giddy. I felt more bubbly. I would be singing loud in the car with like a lint roller as my microphone. Or I'd just be like walking down the street and dancing. I'm not gonna say that's all because of just the detox. It's also a combination of just who I am, of course, and my personality and the things I'm interested in. This detox made me appreciate art and social media a lot, lot more. I feel like having the ability to consume art and social media is sort of a privilege we take for granted. And of course, I agree that there are negative drawbacks with social media and excess consumption, period. Anything in excess is bad for you. It doesn't matter what it is. Social media is such a meaningful and powerful tool for connection and personal understanding. There are so many things I would not know about myself had I not been on social media. I grew up on the internet, so as as long as I can remember, I was finding community through social media. A lot of the times, that's the only community that I had. And because music was the only type of media that I could consume over the detox, I really leaned into being intentional with my music consumption. And I did this thing where I looked up the 500 greatest albums of all time, and I found an amazing playlist on Spotify. And I started from the beginning and just started to listen to music. And it felt like I really understood and saw the artistry when usually like that's not a thing for me in music I just put it on in the background and I realized that art is so necessary to building a beautiful and profound life throughout the entire detox I was writing in my journal about how I just had a craving for words and for cinematic good juicy deep philosophical movies and again it comes back to this realization that I had that I need to be more appreciative of the amazing art around me it is a privilege to watch or read Read or listen to something that can change your perspective, that can give you new perspective. It is a privilege to be able to have art that can conceptualize the way you're feeling and give you the language to express it. This detox not only made me want to be a better and more intentional creative, but it also made me want to be a lot more intentional and appreciative of the media that I get to consume. So if you've been looking for a sign to do a dopamine detox, this is your sign. It will work wonders for your mental health. Anyways, thank you guys so much much for watching. I'll see you next time.